Youth's the season made for joys. Love is then our duty. She alone who that employs well deserves her beauty. Let's be gay while we may. Beauty's a flower despised in decay. Let us drink and sport today. Ours is not tomorrow. Love and youth fly swift away. Age is not with sorrow. Dance and sing. Time's on the wing. Life never knows the return of spring. Life never knows the return of spring. Her hairdressing is like that of an urchin playing in a backyard, but with a difference. I'm a wicked archangel with my flowing ash blonde hair and carpet features. My profile is perfectly Grecian. My eyelashes, built out of hot liquid paint to look like burnt matches, weigh down the lids of my enormous snake-like eyes. I'm Medusa, very exotic, with a glorious skull, high pumice stone cheekbones, and a broad brow. Mine is the most easily recognizable face I know, and is the most luscious. My cheeks are like huge acid pink peonies, and my sullen, discontented, rather evil rosebud of a mouth is painted the brightest scarlet, and is as shiny as tip tree's strawberry jam. With her almond eyes, small mouth, and complete egg-shaped face. With her impossibly blonde curls and long lush eyelashes. In spite of being a treasure of delicacy, she was an all-weather beauty of steel-like hardness. Oh, how mysteriously beautiful I am. With her slightly insane look, eyes that were thinking strange thoughts, and a weary smile. She is Leonardo's Gioconda, a clairvoyant who, possessed of a secret wisdom, knows and sees all. Her hands were of a wonderful flexibility and length. She was an ethereal waif. There was great strength and firmness beneath her extreme fragility. Yes. She was a magnificent actress in spite of her frail delicacy. Yes. She created gigantic effects with a minimum of effort. Yes. They had a splendid zest for life and an ability for expressing that zest. Friends provided impromptu cabarets with their imitations and impersonations. Elaborate and ingenious treasure hunts were organized, and hoax picture exhibitions arranged. The spirit of masquerade reached new heights, and almost every night there was some excuse for putting on a fancy dress.
she was much publicised as the best dressed woman in the world. Such a title would seem to imply frequent changes of wardrobe, but on the contrary, she earned the distinction more for the brilliance of her studied simplicity. She always had a scrubbed classical look, an unparalleled air of slickness, trimness and cleanness. Her hair was sleeked back, whether it was cut short or folded in a knot. She had the air of just come off a yacht, which she very likely had. Though not a great beauty, she possessed the flavour and personality of the age to a high degree. Her mellifluous voice was yet rather curdled. She smoked cigarettes with a nuance that implied having just come out of bed and wanted to go back into it. Her face might have been specially designed for film purposes, for it is impossible to take a bad photograph of her. She is the most natural beauty I know. She has an urchin's nose, flat with minute nostrils, and a small mouth that droops like a whimpering child's, but when laughing, her face is the gayest thing, with demented eyebrows, screwed up nose and eyes and dimples. Her boyish impertinence seems as surprisingly fresh as when she first appeared. She has that rare quality of staying power. She has the same eyes as her mother, more exaggeratedly serpent-like, and the effect was increased by her painting them heavily with a dark liquid pigment inside the sockets, as the Arab women do. Her appearance was very Egyptian, with Nefertiti's long upper lip and slightly pouted mouth, which she painted like a crimson scar across her face. Her hair was metal blonde, her cheekbones pronounced. She resembled a robot woman in a German film. But this inhuman effect was completely shattered by her voice, so full of humour, warm sympathy and human understanding. She is so rare and white, so simple and poignantly touching, that I wondered why no other actress has ever been able to act like her before. The world claimed her as the most voluptuous lover. She was an unaffected, somewhat hearty schoolgirl type, but by some freak of fortune she was endowed with an appearance of extraordinary sophistication. Her enormous blue eyes were surrounded by a halo of dark mushroom-coloured fatigue. The huge crown of her perfect egg-shaped head lent her the look of a Mondigliano. My tall, willowy figure, long, dressed in china neck and arms, and sloping shoulders. No photograph does me justice, for no photograph shows the colour and texture of my beauty. Only myself can feel the pathetic delicacy and helplessness, my mild, childish lisp, and naive naturalness that is so beguiling. I have always been pretty, with starry, lidless, naked eyes. But my developed style, which many imitators could never approximate. One of the most precious and inspiring beauties of our day. She is in no way significant or contemporary, for she is unique. 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 I am a divinely pretty little toy, an expensive doll made of the best quality porcelain with teeth of seed pearls and hair spun from a spider's web, little flat doll-like bosom and thin waist.
Her clothes, although not always fashionable, are of an audacious chic, combined with a sense of humour. She is as gaunt as a rock, and her tall silhouette is slightly formidable, but she is brittle as a stick of barley sugar, and so spectrally thin that one can almost see the light through her. She is too gay and human to be frightening. Oh, what subtle gaiety there is in those upward glancing secretive eyes, with her eyebrows like tapering mouse tails, with the little pale blue veins at the temples of her noble tissue paper forehead, with her wrists, the most delicate stems, she possesses the mad moonstruck ethereality of a ghost. She is an amazing specimen, so absolutely of her time, a cute little Venus that only the 21st century could produce. A pocket Venus with a perfectly proportioned body and a Lilliputian scale. A Venus like the purchased child or most impertinent ventriloquist doll. 